When walking backwards is the way forwards. Nope, this isn't a reverse clip. This is me literally running backwards on holiday on a beach while my sister films me. But why, I hear you cry. I guess I just got tired of running forwards. And I do this quite a lot with open spaces. So I thought I'd research to see if there were any benefits. And turns out there are many. It's also pretty fun. I'm running faster than you backwards. No, you're not. <laughs> Oh, that looks so funny. Is it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> Just a little 5k backwards. <laughs> you love me. Oh, that was so hot. The little sunset 5k run. A study from the Journal of Orthopaedic Sports Physiology found backwards running increased quad strength and reduced knee pain compared to forwards running. But if running is a bit too much for you, perhaps you could try backwards walking. One of the issues with backwards walking is we have to be really attentive with where we're going. We're forced to think about step length, balance and spatial awareness, or we run the risk of knocking into someone or something. So if it's a bit awkward to be doing it in public, and our brain has to use more energy to think about where we're putting each step, why would that be a good thing? Because backwards walking is something that we have to think about, so it's not an automated movement such as walking forwards, it means our brain has to work that little bit harder to make sure we have all our coordination and balance. And therefore, that extra work that the brain has to do is really great at reducing the cognitive decline that all of us inevitably will go through as we age. According to an American study, Walking backwards burns up to 40% more calories per minute than walking forwards. Here is a table taken from the study with various different types of movement and an MET rating that they've given it, which basically is the rating of how many calories are burnt. And we can see here backwards walking 3.5 miles per hour has a much higher rating than generic forward walking. And I guess that's due to you need to concentrate a little bit more because we're not used to walking backwards. It's not something that most of us do every day. There's a certain element of concentration that has to go into it for things like coordination, uh, to increase your balance and just to, in general to make sure you know where you're going. One study found that individuals walking backwards or even thinking, imagining they're walking backwards, helped increase their short term memory recall which I found fascinating because, yeah, you wouldn't really associate the two, but I guess if you have better brain cognition because you're making it work more instead of being on autopilot, like we are with most of our lives, then you are going to have better brain function and that therefore has the opposite of a deleterious effect. It has a net positive effect in improving other brain functions such as memory. And not only has the study shown that it improves short-term memory, but another study that was done has also seen that we see improvements in other brain functions, such as in cognitive recall. One of the things that stood out to me is the increased reaction time for individuals in the sample set that did the backwards walking compared to the forward walkers. We also work muscles such as the calf muscles, the gastrocnemius and the soleus when we walk backwards, because we lead with the tip of the toe instead of the heel. A lot of us that walk, we tend to be heel strikers um, and walking backwards does the opposite where we tend to walk back and take a step back leading with our toe and then pushing down into our heel which works the gastrocnemius and the soleus muscles so therefore strengthening your calf muscles and helping things like Achilles tendonitis, the injury that has prevented me running for many many years. It also helps our posture. Walking forwards, what we tend to do is we tend to lean forwards and a lot of us slouch without even knowing it. So as we walk forwards, lead with our body forwards. So we curve our shoulders forwards and we tend to hunch our necks a little like, and we can get quite ogre-like <laughs> walking. And slouching becomes a really bad habit where we no longer can correct our posture. But walking backwards, almost intuitively helps you correct your posture because again you want to lead with your shoulders and your neck it makes you sit up with your shoulders rolled back doing something backwards you've done all your life forwards is so weird because suddenly you act all awkward and forget how to do it and help your posture and why is good posture so good well having a lovely posture obviously looks really nice makes you appear taller than you are but also it helps prevent things like back pain 
two predominant big things that cause back pain are weak quads and tight hip flexors. And you tend to get these problems when you stay sedentary, sitting on a chair for long periods of time. Because backwards walking particularly targets the strengthening of the quads, you will get positive knock-on effects, such as a reduction in things like back pain and knee pain. And because weak quads normally lead to bad knees in time, if you're walking backwards, which particularly affects the quads, then you are going to see a reduction in your knee pain, or if you didn't have knee pain, a prevention in getting it if you strengthen your quads. But honestly, I think more people would do it if they realised that it was a quick, free, easy way of reducing so many ailments that the body can suffer, especially the type of um, ailments that you get if you're a runner. Studies show that there is a reduction of their falls because their balance improved from having spent time walking backwards. Now, I do see the irony of the fact that I'm recording this video sitting down in my home. It can be a bit weird if people are just looking at you walking backwards. To be honest, it's a bit weird if people are just watching me talking to my phone in public by myself. Also, I do get it can feel super unnatural at times as well. We're just not used to it. I do live in a busy city and you can knock into someone if there's lots of people. Also cars and vehicles, you can get run over. So I do understand the element of not only shame, but um, safety in doing this outside. I guess you're probably like, well, where can we incorporate this backward walking? Smaller 20 second bursts running up or down a hill may be convenient. Or maybe going to your local park where a lot of people work out. Let's try that again, shall we? Where I can look where I'm going. If you are going to try walking backwards outside, please look where you're going. Perhaps adding in your gym session on the treadmill, walking backwards. Yep, and of course I've tried it. So granted, it's not as fun as being outside, but it's definitely safer and you don't feel as silly. It's also safer because you can grab the handles of the treadmill like I'm doing so here. And when you feel more comfortable, you can let go. Here I'm thinking this is too easy, so I've decided to put the treadmill at an incline as well to make it harder for myself. Most of the studies have shown that you should really be doing this for about 10 minutes, so it doesn't have to be a long time. Not sure why I'm so amazed that I'm walking backwards on a treadmill. I know it looks like I'm using my arms for comic effect, but it really helps with the balance and stride when you're walking backwards, especially when you're trying running. Zoop! Or even try and make it harder for yourself by dragging something backwards and walking, creating resistance and therefore strengthening the muscles. This can be done with any heavy load, even at an airport with your heavy suitcases, but most of them have wheels now anyway. In a gym it's perfect because you have these sleds and you can adjust the weight, you can add weight, remove weight to make it harder or more easy for yourself. Yes. Easy, quick and free way for you to improve your mobility. It can be added to your daily walks or to your routine in the gym. I hope in this video I've convinced you enough to try it. At least give it a try. Let me know what you think in the comments and please give me a like if you have enjoyed this video just down here because it really, really helps. And yeah, I'll be back with a new video soon. Ciao!